we have council stakeholders from national, provincial, and local government, uh, filmmakers, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, and anyone who's sneaked in for a free lunch, a very warm welcome to you all. It's an honor for me to welcome you all today to the launch of the National Film and Video Foundation of South Africa, where we are looking at the economic baseline study report. As you all know, the NAVF is governed by the National Film and Video Foundation Act, and our mi main mandate is to promote and develop the film industry, is to provide and encourage the provision of opportunities for persons, especially from disadvantaged communities, to get involved in the film and video industry, and to encourage the development and distribution of local films and video products. Today marks an important day in the development of our local film industry. We are presenting a comprehensive study on the economic impact of the South African film industry. The last time government did such a study was in the year 2000. The study includes value chain, analysis, size of industry, economic multiplier effects, including the number of direct and indirect jobs that are being created. We are emboldened by the fact that the study vindicates the view we have always held that the local film industry as part of the broader creative industries is a major driver of economic growth job creation, and the building of sustainable livelihoods. We are encouraged to note that the industry contributes 3.5 billion rands annually to our gross domestic product, GDP, and that it provides employment to more than 25,000 people. We will use the study to strengthen the work we are doing to provide increased and sustained support for the industry. Currently, we are in the process of converting the National Film and Video Foundation into a fully fleshed South African Film Commission and establishing a film fund. We believe that these initiatives will contribute significantly to the growth, development and sustainability of our local film industry. The study we are realizing today will assist us in our work to generate additional investments into the sector, expand enterprise and business opportunities, create a sustainable funding model once we have set up the fund, strengthen competitiveness, facilitate skills development and build the necessary support infrastructure as well as expand existing and new markets for our filmmakers. This study lays the basis for our interventions to ensure that the film sector contributes directly to the goals of our Mzansi Golden Economy Strategy. The study will also assist us as we seek to build partnerships with the private sector. It will also strengthen our ability to advocate for more favorable incentives for the sector so as to attract more investments. <coughs> Using the finding of the study, we will be in a better position to identify the best institutional structures and mechanisms to support the growth of the sector. Program Director, we released this important study at a time when our local films and actors continue to receive acclaim across the globe. I refer here to artists such as Florence Masebe, who recently won the Best Actress in a Lead Role Award for the film El Elwani at this year's African Movie Academy AMA Awards. The film also won the Best Production Design Award. A number of other South African productions were also nominated and received awards 
at the same event. Earlier this year, we celebrated the achievement by the, the film Laila Fori, which received the Jury Special Mention Award at the Berlinale International Film Festival. A number of other local film productions continue to make us proud on the world stage. To us, this indicates that our film industry can compete successfully with the best in the world. It also indicates that the world wants to hear the South African story, a story of triumph of the human spirit. I wish to assure all those involved in the local film sector that your good work has not gone unnoticed. You have the full support of our government. I therefore take this opportunity to congratulate the National Film and Video Foundation for making it possible for this study to be done and released. We hope it will be a useful planning tool, not only for government, but also for our partners in the sector. Let us work together to ensure that our film industry grows from strength to strength. I thank you. So, so how do you go about doing a study of this nature? Well, first of all, we had our scope. The next thing was to look at the industry and define the value chain. How is this industry made up? Once I can landscape the industry, I can then put a, a RAND value to it, and I can go to every single stage of that value chain, and I can actually break down the costs. And these, these bits of information are necessary in order to ultimately do economic modeling. And we'll get into that just now. So our approach was to take those three elements and, and, and find the information. So let's look at the value chain. Now, this is, this is pretty much an industry standard. The, 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 the four stages that govern a film's creation from incubation through development all the way through to when it finally appears on the big screen has four distinct stages. Pre-production, also called development, production, post-production, and distribution. So that is how we define the value chain. I want to just get into a little bit more um, definition there. Pre-production, as I said earlier, was the incubation stage. This is the stage where you're defining concepts, you're looking at screenplays, you're trying to find funding, getting your legals um, sorted, getting your rights sorted. All of that happens in pre-production. The next stage is production. Um, this stage starts from the day the cameras start rolling. It's called the, the, the first day of principal photography. So everything that happens up until that date is pre-production. Then when the cameras start rolling, you've got production. And that ends on the last day that the cameras roll. So it's the entire shoot. Then for post-production, we defined it as, okay, the film's in the can. Now it needs to be finessed so they can go onto the big screen. So it has to be edited, sound needs to be added, it needs to be graded, etc. So all of those processes are put into, into post-production. And ultimately, you've got a finished product which you now need to distribute, and that goes into the distribution stage. So it's the marketing, the creating the awareness, doing the deliverables, going across all the various platforms. So that was our value chain. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, next to uh, Zama, we've got, uh, it looks like Jeff Jacobs who's an economist in Deloitte's Economic Advisory Unit. So all those questions that Judy couldn't answer. Interest rates. He's Obviously. the man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, welcome to you, Jeff. Uh, the DTI has got their fingerprints all over everything that we do. So we couldn't have a panel without a representative from there. And uh, the Chief Director, Investment Services at the DTI, Francois Trotter, welcome. Thank you. Uh, somebody perhaps who doesn't need much of an introduction, uh, very, very well known in our industry, whether it's music, but more and more uh, as a filmmaker, Chico Twala. And of course, you've met Judy Prince, who worked tirelessly uh, on this particular project. In fact, I think her hair was uh, jet black before she started this study. <laughs> <was a> <laughs> Right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm just going to ask our panelists, uh, let me start with you, Zama, just to say a few words, share a few thoughts uh, in terms of uh, what this study has meant and what perhaps you see as the implications. Just ask everyone to just a few comments and then we'll ask you, uh, uh, we'll, we'll turn to the floor as it were. But before that, 
Um, I know a lot of you were taking notes, but the good news is that this uh, memory stick contains the full report, uh, all 15,000 pages of it. So, <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not that long. <laughs> um, so, all the details are there. Uh, the full report is available for you. And uh, also, it's live on the website now as well. So, uh, you can go to the website and also download it. So, Saman, let's start with you. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, this certainly is uh, quite a momentous occasion for us as the NABF. Um, I think it fills us with uh, great pride that we, as the organization that's mandated uh, to spearhead the development of the industry, we are able to, um, to have spearheaded you know, a study like this one because um, we know that um, the film industry has come a long way despite uh, whatever perceptions other people who are not in the industry may have about the industry, but those of us who are in industry have always taken it seriously. But um, the absence of, uh, of data, the absence of intelligence has contributed to, um, to not being given the stature that in fact we deserve as the film industry. So I think the opportunity to really um, spearhead the, you know, the study and make sure that the research is done and data is collected that will inform our strategies going forward is something that really um, is quite exciting for us. And we are looking forward to the engagement with industry today, but not only just this afternoon, but I think going forward, we are looking forward to more engagement as we understand and we hear from people in terms of how do we use the data that was received in order to grow the industry further. So, of course, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Jeff Jacobs, a couple of uh, uh, thoughts uh, on this uh, study. I mean, you guys worked very hard on this. Yeah. <clears throat> I think for me, uh, the interesting part about a study like this is um, are all the additional questions that come out of it. So we've done quite a number of studies similar to this one uh, for a number of uh, industries. And there's always more questions that come out of these, um, out of these studies. And it's usually the first starting point from, from which all these questions come. So you have a static view now, and you can just start asking a number of different questions, and that's going to lead to more questions, and it really gets things going. Uh, but it usually is the starting point, and it's always the, the point where the real dynamics of an industry start to come, uh, start to come out. It's, it's been quite interesting um, to really get in depth into the film industry. Uh, Francois, you must be very pleased that uh, the industry is more than paying its way, which means you can give us more, right? Yes. <laughs> well, as you've stated, you know, I mean, such an impact analysis assists us as, as DTI to, 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 to uh, go to Treasury, to, to, uh, to provide additional motivation why we actually need more funds. For me, the, the, the study really highlighted the value chain. I mean, yeah. for me, the inter I always said, you know, that, that DTI, trading industry, oh, historically, we've, we've looked a lot at the manufacturing industry. And, and, and I believe that the, that the service industry within the DTI is almost a bit of a step, step child. And, and if you look at the, at the value chain, I believe we should get much more involved in, in the specific value chain, like you said, even up to the point of distribution and marketing. Thank you. So this helps. Uh, Francois, thank you very much indeed. And uh, Chico, you, I guess, are one of the voices of the people that are here uh, as a filmmaker yourself. Um, what are your thoughts on what you've heard and uh, what it might mean for you as a filmmaker? I think uh, uh, for me, it shows that if we work together, we can do more, especially on job creation. Uh, I'm happy that DTI is here sitting next to you because they are the people, when I visited them, they said, we don't fund low-budget movies. <laughs> now, <laughs> and I think the study has shown that, you know, uh, low-cost movies can make a difference. We can create a lot of opportunities for our people. Okay. The Chico Twana, thank you very much indeed. Judy, you spoke quite a lot before. Yeah. I was just wondering now that you've had a chance to to eat something, <laughs> is there anything that's come to mind that you just, no, as an opening shot for this I think, discussion? I think what's important is that we used verifiable data, which is the DTI data, and that allows us now to do it annually, if we can, 
um, to see if it's uh, the growth, the transformation, if initiatives that are being, are being um, implemented are actually working. Um, and it also, for me, one thing that's very important is the industry needs to work together. Um, exactly what Checo is saying, across all levels, all the commissions and the NFEF and, and the DTI, everyone needs to pull together to make all the different areas of the value chain work. All right, so those are the uh, opening statements from our panelists here that uh, are here to sort of uh, engage with you. Um, let's open the floor. If you have any specific questions for a specific panelist, then uh, please say who you want the question to go to. Let's uh, take maybe three at a time, and then we'll just take notes here and then see how far we go. So if you've got the microphone, <laughs> you're the one talking next. Uh, afternoon, my name is Edward Sumele from City Life. Um, I've got two questions. The first one is based on the fact that the, I think this one is for Judy. It's based on the fact that uh, there's been an 84% growth over the past six years. But what the study doesn't tell us is, it doesn't explain why this sudden, why this huge uh, growth over such a short period of time. The other question is perhaps directed to the minister. Um, Edda only spoke about transforming the National Film Review Foundation into a full-fledged commission. How different is going to work and why, how is it going to improve on, 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 the, on, the, on, the, on the work that the National Film and Video Foundation is doing currently? And what, what is it that it can do that the Film Commission will do? Thank you. Uh, afternoon, my name is Lefa Mukwena, Ikasa. Um, I just want to understand from the study, one of the things that um, perhaps it was mentioned, but I still need uh, needed it for clarity. Um, from time to time, when one listens to companies like Deloitte & Touch or Touche, uh, it's more about economics and money. <laughs> and f by, by that extension, it means that um, we talk about capital. But I think one of the aspects of capital that is being missed or not being incorporated into, especially if you are to watch short films or low cost films is the issues of culture and tradition and languages. I haven't had this coming through. Was any study done on this particular aspect? So obviously um, introduction of the DTI incentive was a catalyst. So that's definitely been so what it did is it provided some of the missing funding, production cost funding, so that's had a huge impact. And then obviously the initiatives of the NFEF um, where they're providing grants and the film commissions who have been providing grants and both of those organizations that are, um, have been providing training, um, script development, and so forth. And that's been like, quite recent. I think we, we continue, obviously, uh, being led by the department to look into <coughs> ways of how the institutions